All right, folks, we're going to do this again. I am so sorry. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> My apologies. This is Cultivating Intimacy. My name is Kazimbe Abena, known as the Heart Whisperer, Intimacy Coach, and Holistic Practitioner. And I am so sorry. I hope I get some people back on here because I like, wow. Uh, yeah, really sorry about that, everybody. I don't know what I hit, but it clearly was not the right button. Let me uh, see if I can invite some folks again. Not the right button. I am so sorry. Sometimes me and technology doesn't get along. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Boy, boy, boy. Okay. So we are doing love languages this week. Love languages number three. And I'm going to ask folks on the other one. To tell people to join me on the other one. I hope I'm getting some folks here. Not quite. Not yet. Not, well, no, not yet. Not yet. Let's see here. Thanks for coming back, Tracy. Derek, hey, man, I saw you reached out to me, man. I'm sorry I didn't get back to you. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining up. Chans, Chans. Got Chans and some other folks. Vicky, let me inv invite these folks again. See if we can get it started here. All right. Gonna give it a few minutes here. Mm. Technical difficulties. I so apologize. So apologize. All right, I don't want folks waiting too long for me and my screw up. So I'm going to go ahead and get started so here. Apologize. Hey, Vicki. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> Riz, how are you? All right. All right, so let me go ahead and get into this. Um, so we're doing receiving gifts this, this week. And this is Love Languages. Let me show the book again as always. I'm pulling directly from this book. Directly from this book. This is Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Um, very popular book. Uh, he's been doing this for a long time. And it's a great book in terms of how to navigate relationships and how each person can get what they want. Uh, everyone's, the whole concept is that everyone speaks a love languages. You have a top one or two. And uh, it's good to know that so that you can communicate and make sure that your love tank is full, make sure that you feel that you're being honored and supported in your relationships, and also making sure that you know how to honor and support your mate because we don't always need the same thing. And we're not always asking for the same thing. And sometimes we wonder why we are uh, lacking or why we're unhappy in our relationship. And it could just be that a simple adjustment needs to be made where you need to be fed a certain way and it can solve all your problems. So this week is a pretty popular one. It's called Receiving Gifts. If you were with me last week, you know that there was a question the week, the week prior. I was actually off last week. That was 4th of July, but the week prior to that when we did the actual show, 
uh, there was a question about were there gender preferences uh, in the love languages and from my research gathered no there are not I thought that there were but there are not so they tend to, they tend to be or appear they appear to be pretty evenly distributed across the board so with these love languages um, you're talking about hey Kim uh, receiving gifts so receiving gifts is pretty popular and this is love language number three of course uh, and literally it is what it's it, it is what it says receiving gifts the reason that it's so powerful is that receiving gifts is something that gives the person something tangible to hold on to as a reminder of the love or of the connection or of the event that they shared with you with a loved one so very very strong uh, very important for a lot of people and in reading the book uh, apparently uh, love languages from an anthropological perspective from a social perspective from a humanistic perspective um, or giving gifts rather uh, receiving gifts is really popular across cross-culturally so that translates that translates across all cultures to all parts of the globe you know for obvious reasons it's pretty self-explanatory uh, giving uh, gifts and money is another way to give gifts so gifts of money and the idea is that hey you know the the dollar amount of the gift is not as important as, as the intention and the thought behind it now it only becomes an issue if you're like a millionaire and you only give like a dollar gifts when you could clearly afford more and it's not that you have to always give thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gifts but I think that what's important in when you're giving gifts is the intention behind it and the time taken to say you know what I know that honey you don't just like roses but you like you like yellow roses or you like white roses or something like that now it doesn't have to be all that every time sometime it could just be listen I thought about you today and I just brought you something again it's, it's the intent and it's the thought behind it I, I love you I thought about you I was running errands today and just happened to grab this from a street vendor. Here you go, love. Thank you so much. You thought about me. That's all I asked. That's great. People who have receiving gifts as a love language will appreciate that. Asina, how are you? They will appreciate that. So also in terms of uh, giving is one needs to consider that if you're not used to spending money if you save a lot well the notion is that oh you know I don't want to spend any money you really can't afford that or that's not gonna matter well again maybe it may not matter to you but it may it will matter to your spouse if love chance thank you for joining us back man sorry about that everybody technical difficulties giving gifts will matter uh, to your spouse particularly coming from you so we want to keep in mind if we're real thrifty if we're not into spending money that it's an investment into your relationship we really want to remember that really in all these love languages that it's about an investment into your relationship you're investing in a relationship so you're putting money in the bank if anyone has stocks you know that with a lot of stocks uh, you know, long-term ones you don't see you know you don't see the kickback on those for years well, this one you actually it's still an investment but you may you may you may see a kickback immediately in the form of a more loving and better attitude better energy in the house a deeper connection more joy more happiness in your household once you put these things into action hey Deirdre thanks for joining uh, Hasina says that's her primary love language and physical touch very good very good I think physical touch is, is mine along with uh, words of affirmation thanks for sharing that uh, Hasina I appreciate that um so again it's we really have to the whole thing about love languages it, it's getting us to fully investigate appreciate and accept what languages our lover speaks in to make them happy so this is a these principles are selfless principles selfless principles and they need to be focused on the other person which is really good 
in my opinion, really good for a lot of men because we can get a little bit self-centered at times uh, because we can have kind of a singular focus. And we can also get a bit um, mundane in our approach to life and also routine. Uh, there are plenty of examples in the book, Love Languages, that I'm drawing this from that talk about that. Uh, where we're just kind of going, we're just getting in a rut. We just, you know, we're just in a routine. We've been married for so many years and we've got children and we're just going through the motions. And it's not that the, the couple is loving each other anymore. It's that they're in a routine and they don't know how to get out of it. Well, this is something that can really add some spark and kind of rekindle uh, the marriage and add, joy, and add joy and love again to the marriage that can be seen and can be experienced. So that's really, really important. All right, so the other thing that... Uh, that uh, Gary Chapman says in regard to um, gifts, receiving gifts, is giving the gift of self. Now that's a bit, um, it is similar to quality time, but the thing with this is you want to make sure that you're there when you're talking about giving gifts, giving gifts and giving of self as a gift in critical and crucial times. So that's kind of the difference is that Quality time is, you know, you're there all the time, but this one here, giving of the self as a part of giving gifts, you can give gifts and it's not always, you don't always have to be present. So in this, in this, in this piece here, in terms of giving himself, it's making sure that you're there when your spouse needs you, meaning there's a death in the family, they're going through a tough time. Uh, they've had some sort of letdown at work. Maybe there's some sort of celebration. They're having a promotion, a dinner promotion or something like that. They've received an award. So those are times where you're giving the gift of yourself. You're being present and you're showing up for your spouse. Again, it is similar to quality time, uh, but it's just a little bit different. It's a little bit different. This fall still falls under the umbrella of uh, receiving gifts. That's really important. So if someone says, well, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what my spouse likes, and I don't want to ask him or her. I don't want to give it away in terms of what gifts they like. That's cool. Talk to their friends. Uh, talk to their parents. Talk to their other family members. I've actually done this myself. Um, I think that that will actually add uh, even more uh, endearing qualities to the gift if you if you know your spouse says well how did you know or your mate or your boyfriend or girlfriend says how did you know that I like this I said well you know I took the time and I, I, I talked to your mother I talked to your father I talked to your girlfriend you know just the fact that you cared enough about them to make sure that you made the right choice you did you just didn't do anything but you made the right choice because you cared about them enough because you wanted to impact them enough that you made sure you asked questions did a little research and you found exactly what they want, exactly what they like. That's important. And I think that adds to uh, the love um, and the receptivity of the gift that you're giving to your spouse. So that's really important. What we can also do is make, a, make lists. You can hear, you know, if you're out with your spouse or your mate or your, you know, your significant other, other and you hear them say something like they like this or they like that, you know, Make a mental note. Maybe you have a list. Maybe you have some little list on your phone that you can just jot down notes and jot down things you've heard them say that they like. And you have time to get them at, at whenever you think it's necessary. Another thing to do is challenge yourself and maybe you give them a gift once a week for once a day for a week and just see if you're just kind of testing the waters, see what they like, see how their attitude changes, see if it really affects them in a positive way. And then you can do maybe whatever you want to do. Maybe it's once a month, twice a month, once a week, whatever you want, you know. So, but there are various ways to get that started. Uh, and there's one more way here. So, I know that people, again, when you give things, yes, you can buy things, and there, and there are times when that's absolutely appropriate. But there are other times where people really appreciate you making something for them with your hands, creating something. You don't have to be a master craftsman. You don't have to be an artist. Hey, Riziki L., you don't have to be an artist. 
again, it's the care that you've taken. Maybe you decide to just take a, qu a quick crafts class over a weekend for a couple hours, or you decide to paint something. Uh, I just did this, uh, did that earlier, no, it was last, last year, I believe. Uh, we just, I went to a painting class and we painted a lion, you know. So, just something that's very simple. But it's to show, listen, man, this is from me to you. This is from me to you, something that I did, and I want you to have it because I'm thinking about you. So, really, really simple things to do, really simple things to do. Or, let's say you go to the beach or you're on a hike, and you see an interesting rock or you see an inter interesting piece of wood that is shaped in a, in a unique or odd way. Um, interesting flower. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good to just pick those things up and to give those things to our mates. Anthony, what's happening, buddy? Um, as tokens of appreciation and as gifts that will be received. So that's also very simple and very easy to do. It, who else here on, on the line has, uh, has receiving gifts as, as a love language? Anyone else know? And again, the easiest way to, to find out is you can literally go to Google, type in Love Languages Quiz PDF so you can download it, print it out, and it's 30 questions, and you're done. Very simple to do. Very easy to do. Very easy to do. And someone pointed out that it might change. It actually might change. I've heard that it actually does change over time. Uh, maybe depending upon the mood you're in. or So it can change. It can change. And it's just kind of good to know. It's good to know. It's good to know. Anyone else? <laughs> Alright, Vicky. <laughs> Vicky says it's all about cash, baby. It's all about money, baby. Dollars and cents. Dollar bills, y'all. I hear you. All right, Vicky, good. You know what you like. It is what it is. All right. Good, good. Anybody else? Rita, how are you? What's your, what's your love language, Rita? Do you know your love language? Do you know at least one of them, if not two? I'm trying to find out and see who has a love language of gifts. I know that Hasina does and Vicky does. I do not, so I'm wondering if anyone else does. Uh, okay. Looks like no one else does. That's fine. All right, so does anyone have any questions uh, in regard to love languages or intimacy? Are you dealing with any challenges that you would uh, perhaps like answered? I've been dealing with a lot of, we had a discussion, me and some friends had a discussion in regard to uh, intimacy in different forms of relationships, alternative relationships. Tracy is acts of service, words of affirmation, never been too big on gifts. Got you, got you. Very nice, Tracy. I'm the same way. Very nice. I'm actually at words of affirmation. Acts of service. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Riz says acts of service and touch. Very good. One of mine is touch. Acts of service. Very good. Thank you for sharing as well, Riz. I appreciate that. Does anyone have any questions in regard to some challenges that they're having in their relationships? Babakaya, how are you, sir? Thank you for joining. I, I would love to talk with you about that. Um, so as I was saying, and just feel free to, to jot it down. We were talking a lot about uh, this weekend, we had a group discussion on intimacy, alternative relationships, um, multiple intimate sessions, with, in session with multiple, set, intimate sessions with multiple people, more than two. Vicky, you're saying intimate touch is a challenge for you. Is that what you're saying? So let me know. Let me know if that's what you mean, Vicky. If intimate intimate touch is a challenge, let me know, and I can address that. And Vicky, if that is what you're saying, 
uh, Vicky, I'm picking up for you that it's a challenge. So all, all roads lead back to self. All roads lead back to self. So Vicky, what, what you're dealing with there is self-perception. Uh, it's really an issue and, you know, some other things that, that we've talked about. Um, but that's, that's obviously a major one. So the way, the way to get over that is to really fall in love with yourself again. Give yourself love. Give yourself the attention that, that you need, that you deserve. And fall in love with yourself again. Because if you are used to giving yourself love, whether it's physical touch, maybe you need to go out and get some more pampering, you know, get your nails did, get your hair done, get your toes did, whatever it may be, go to a spa, get a spa treatment, get used to receiving that pampering. I think that over time, it builds trust in people laying hands on you in ways that are safe and that are non-sexual then you can get past that. You can get past that. But that is, that is what I'm getting for you is that it's definitely an issue of a self-perception. It's a self, it's a, it's a self-perception issue. It's a worthiness issue um, and some other things and some other things. But I know you are working. I know you're working through it. So very good. Very good. But just, just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. Any issues that we have, I know it's so easy. You're welcome. I know it's so easy to look on the outside and point the finger, but the fact of the matter is, is that we change, if we change our perception, the world around us changes. And again, I'm no different than you. Uh, if, if I'm saying these things, you best believe I've also had the challenges as well. And probably I'm still dealing with many challenges and looking to get through some things and pass some things and looking to grow and evolve like we all are. So uh, I don't hesitate to say that at all. Um, so, so Riz says, I'm a giver, but not too good at receiving. <laughs> All right. So, uh, the closed heart syndrome, the closed heart syndrome. Interesting. This, this is, this is something that I've had to deal with in my own personal life. Uh, oh, you know, there to give. Oh yeah. There to give, there to give, there to give. But when it's time to receive, you know, all of a sudden, a little uncomfortable, you know, also uncomfortable voicing and speaking for what, you know, we need, you know, things like that. Not quite sure, you know, uh, and the fact of the matter is that an open heart is a synergistic, it's a synergistic action. It's a synergistic motion. So it's, it's giving is, is only half of it. You need to be able to receive as well. And here's why you need to be able to receive. Obviously, not only, not only for your own benefit, but when we receive something that's been given to us, whether it's something as simple as a compliment or gifts or whatever it may be, we're also allowing that other person to be blessed as well. When we acknowledge that they have lifted us up, that they have brought us joy, the universe then responds to that and then they receive their blessing from that as well. They receive it even if we didn't, but there's something in addition to that. There's, it's almost like it's compounded. It's almost like it's energized. It's almost like um, in a very real way, if other people see us voice appreciation for this person, then they also, they also view this person with appreciation too. So you never know the ripple effect of the blessings that this person could receive. Just by you saying thank you and receiving, and receiving what they had to give to you. So always keep in mind, again, it's never just about one thing. It's never just about us. It's always about our relations to ourselves and the environment. Yes, all roads lead back to us, but they lead back to us so then that we can also then view the landscape and view the environment and see how we are relating to everyone and everything around us. 
and the most important relationship first starts with us it was uh, us and ourselves that's the most important one and as Vicky is saying here absolutely energy exchange energy exchange and let me say this as well let me say this as well and again I'm saying this in terms of receiving uh, gifts and receiving love sometimes we can fool ourselves thank you Riss, and I know you will um, sometimes we can fool ourselves it's a bit of a trick of the ego oh I'm fine I don't need any help I'm good no I'm fine over here oh no now I can help you cuz you know that's what I do I help you but you don't help me no you don't help me no I don't I don't need help I'm fine I'm always fine I'm I'm fine that's a bit of a trick of the ego we have to watch that and I'm saying that again because I've done that myself we have to watch that there's no gold medal for that you know we are living breathing creatures human beings like anyone else we all need to breathe we all need to eat we all need to sleep so if it sounds like you Tracy all right you know we 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 really need to 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 understand that whatever we give out we need to receive ourselves as well we deserve it as well and I think I see this with a lot of men a lot of men that um, a <laughs> risk uh, a lot of men that put themselves on a pedestal as if they don't need healing uh, as if they don't need to receive love um, and ironically you know men we can really have some of the most fragile egos out there we put on this facade but we are a lot of us are suffering in silence and I've spoken about this before and I'm going to keep on speaking about it when it when it comes up and when it's appropriate because it's so needed. I mean, we are a lot of a lot of men are are dying and suffering in silence, um, and it can easily be avoided. But we really have to get off that thing, and then we want to say, "Oh, well, you know, we're humble." No, that's not that's not really that's not really the definition of humility. <laughs> you know, you're not wanting to receive love uh, and not acknowledge when someone's giving something to you. That's not that's not humility. That's something else. That's not humility. It isn't. And that we're also fooling ourselves with that as well. That's actually arrogant. Because again, we are, we are in a sense, withholding the act of gratitude that we can give to this person so that they can get their blessings because we're being humble. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a trick. It's a trick. It's a trick. So a lot of us men, we really need to ask ourselves, okay, when was the last time I let someone lay hands on me to heal me? When's the last time I asked for help? We all need it. We all, all, all need it. But does, but, so Tracy says, but does that stem from being hurt? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's absolutely fear-based. And guess what? We all have a reason, we all have a reason to not accept help, to fear help, to fear attention, to fear nurturing, to feel intimate, to fear intimacy. We all have a reason to fear a connection. We all have war stories. We all have wounds. Every last one of us. Every last one of us. That guru, that master that you think is awesome, that pass from the pulpit, you better believe he, she, along with everyone else has issues. The difference is we would hope that these people are working on theirs actively like anyone else, you know, or even more so, because if they're putting their hands on people, if they're looking to heal people, we would hope that they would first at least be aware of what they're going through too. So you know how, you know how the old adage goes, you know, we teach what we learn. Um, and risk, you, you say you deserve it. You better believe you do. You absolutely do. And you have to believe that. And again, I'm saying this because this is one of my issues. This is one thing that I'm really trying to get a, a handle on. You know, there is no gold medal for saying, for, for acting like you don't need help. <laughs> None. 
Riss says, in intimate relationships, I believe that I do that because I feel the hurt the men I have dated in the past and maybe did not realize I blocked myself from receiving and became depleted. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you know that you're a giver, if you know that you're a giver, and some people give more than others and there's no right or wrong with it, it is what it is. If you know that you're a giver, then you should know automatically that even more than the average person that you need to receive more than the average person because you give so much. You give so much. So you're, you're going to, so let's say, you, let's say, let's say you, you start your, your, your tank uh, full at the beginning of the week, but you know, by the, by midweek, you've given so much love out, it's almost empty. Whereas the other person who started a full tank throughout uh, at the beginning of the week with, at the beginning of the week with you, their tank is still almost full because they just, they just, they don't give that much. They're not like that. And that's fine. There's no judgment there. But what I'm saying is that if you are a giver, somehow, some way, that energy has to come back to you. Because again, as I said a few moments ago, it's synergistic. It's a give and take. It's an action. It's reciprocity. That's kind of the nature of the universe. And if we stop in that, if we stop somewhere in that process, then 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 there is an imbalance. There's an imbalance in the relationship. There's an imbalance in our bodies. There's an imbalance in our psyche. And it goes on and on and on. So we need to look at things as circles. A circle represents what? Many things, but one, one thing it represents is completion. If you have half a circle, that's not completion. So I, I give, but I don't receive. Uh-oh, uh I don't receive. Okay, I'll receive now. Oh, okay. Now we have completion. Now we have completion. We really, I really want to encourage us to think in those terms. All right, so Vicky says also affect, it affects their leadership skills. Indeed. Indeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. I used to... Um, Tracy says, I think I'm in the wrong circle. All right, so let me... <laughs> Hold on a second, Tracy. Hold on. I'm going I'm to get to that in a second. Vicky, you bring up a really good point, how it affects, how it affects leadership. It absolutely does. Um, I'll never forget, uh, I had encountered a manager years ago, and um, he was a brilliant go-getter, did what he needed to do, super hard worker. But as you know, you can't always, you know, it's not only the skill of being able to see a, a, a completion and completing a uh, uh, task and seeing things through, but also good managers have the skill set of delegation. He wasn't very good at delegating. He tried to do it all himself. And ironically, his company imploded. Um, and that comes from, you know, hey, I got it. I don't need anybody's help. I got it. But he tried to keep all figures in his head. He wouldn't write anything down. So even if you came in and you tried to help him, uh, there was really very little that, that you could even look into to even try to help him. And I think a lot of that was fear. He was, he was fearful that someone would take his business. He was fearful that someone would take over. Uh, and this is also, you know, tends to be uh, kind of a, a, a trait that men tend to roll with, you know. I'm going to keep this. It's mine. I've got it. And there's that fear again. There's that fear again. You know, uh, I was talking with uh, someone today and they said, you know, I think I'm being strong by putting up these walls. Um, and they were talking about relationships. And they were saying that because they realized that they weren't. And I said, you're right, you're not. You're being just the opposite. You're being just the opposite. So we need to be vulnerable. When we're vulnerable, the heart is open to give and receive. When we're vulnerable, the heart is open to give and receive. 
And it is impossible, I'll tell you right now, it is impossible, it is impossible to have a proper intimate relationship and not be vulnerable. It's impossible. You think that it's going well, but you're only fooling yourself. Because if you are not vulnerable, if you are in vulnerable, vulnerability meaning open to the possibility of hurt or danger, meaning ex expressing yourself, being honest with your expression, if you're not doing that, then your heart is not open, you're not being vulnerable, and there's no true connection. Because a person has nothing to connect to. People connect from the heart. They connect to death many places, but one major place is the heart. Major, major place. And we get there by being vulnerable, by, by opening ourselves up and expressing ourselves. Expressing ourselves. We have to do that. So, Tracy, you're saying you think you're in the wrong circle. <laughs> wrong circle of friends, huh? Wrong circle. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Well, Tracy, you know what? Sometimes we know who we are, but we want to we want to hold on to the past because it's familiar. Sometimes we just don't want to embrace who we really know we are because we don't know what we're going to do if the people that have been around us are no longer around us. We think that's going to be it. We think our life is going to end and I don't know anything. It's 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 like it's like uh, the world is flat, so don't don't go past don't go past that mark there because the world is flat. But it's actually a circle. There's so much more that life has to offer, and it's and you won't fall off of any edge. You just keep going, you keep going around and around. There's so much more to explore. So just keep that in mind, and and keep this in mind too for you, Tracy. It's it's about your truth. It's about your truth. It always is. It always is. And also, just because people were there for a time and have been there for a long time doesn't mean that there are not seasons. It doesn't mean that things don't need to change. And things can change without malice. That's fine. You have every right to say, you know what, I'm going in a different direction. I'm a different person, I'm embracing these values, I'm embracing who I really am. You have every right to say that. We all do. You say it with love instead of with malice. You say it with, with, with care and with exalting yourself instead of with hate. And perhaps there are wrinkles initially, perhaps it's uncomfortable initially, but it will get better. And the reason it will get better is because it's your truth. It's your truth. It's yours. It's yours. And the irony about this is that no one can speak your truth but you. And when I speak of truth, in terms of us individually, I'm talking about our God self. So I fully believe that when we're talking about our own truth, that we're talking about God and how God has manifested itself in us for us to then shine our light and show the world who we are. And through that, we honor the Creator. So that's where I'm coming from with that. So essentially, if you're living in your truth, you're doing God's work through you. You're being who you were meant to be. If we stand in that way, who can be against us? You know how the scripture goes. Vicky says, create, Vicky says, create a new one. Absolutely. If you're in a circle that you don't like, create a new one. Create a new one.
me see if I missed any comments here. This depletion thing, I really can't emphasize that enough. I'm so glad you brought that up, Riss. Um, you know, I think life has become more and more complicated, and I think it's become that way on purpose. Uh, this discussion is not necessarily about this, so I'm not going to get into it too deep, but it's definitely social engineering. It's just far too complicated. There's far too, there's far too much overstimulation. It's just too much stuff going on. Life doesn't need to be this complicated and this difficult. Um, so it pulls us out of our center, pulls us away from who we really are. Excuse me. We have to make a, a concerted effort to make sure that we're not depleted. We have to make a concerted effort to stay healthy. Um, we have to make a concerted effort to be in touch and stay centered and go within. So it's too easy to become depleted. It's just too easy. It's too easy. So just understand that. Understand that. So set up your life in a way where you're being fed. And again, as I said, if you're welcome, Riss, definitely. Thank you for pointing this out. If you know that you are a giver, you know automatically that you need to receive. So what that also means is that you're going to have to do things that the average person probably won't need to do. But for you, it's not an option. It's not an option. You're going to have to make sure that you're getting a certain amount of sleep. You're going to have to make sure that the people that uh, love you, that are around you, are speaking your love language and that you're speaking their love language so, so that there's reciprocity and synergism. You're going to have to make sure that you're eating properly, that you're exercising. You're going to have to make sure that you're, you're, you're staying as, as much in a state of joy and that you're doing what makes you happy as much as possible. Again, because you give out so much. You give out so much. It's really, really important. Really, really important. Let me see if anything else is coming up for you, Tracy, if you're there. Let me see if anything else is coming up for you. Hmm. Yeah, the main thing with you, Tracy, is that you know yeah, the big message for you, Tracy, is that you know who you are, and you've been denying it for a long time. And you've been, de you've been denying it because you've been trying to please the people around you. You're afraid of ridicule. Um, you're afraid of being ostracized. But the fact of the matter is that if you continue, you're not living your life. You're living someone else's life. You're living someone else's life. And I, I, I see this a lot in people. Why? Because I had, to, I had to make a decision in my own life about how I conducted my own life. Um, is, that a, uh, <laughs> is that a sad face? Well, I'm going to ask you, why is it sad, uh, Tracy? And, uh, uh, you know, why is that sad for you, Tracy? Because I'm gonna, and and I'll tell you why I'm asking. I'm asking you that in a minute. But why is that sad for you? Okay, I'm gonna. I'm going to go ahead and just continue to talk. Go ahead and give me your answer when you can, uh, Tracy. But Okay. Um, what, I, what I want to say to you, Tracy, is that if you choose to really embrace who you really are, it's, it's a whole new world that will open up for you. And Riz says you can change that by learning the lesson. Absolutely. And that's a very good point, Riz. This whole thing is really trying to get you 
to level up. You know, what you're going through now, Tracy, is really trying to get you to level up. It's saying, all right, all right, good, good, all right, okay, so we've been in middle school, that's great. Awesome, sweet, wonderful, so you've aced out, great, you've aced out in middle school, wonderful. It's trying to go to high school now. So, the tools and the concepts that you've been dealing with in high school are no longer, uh, in, in grade school are no longer applicable because you're going to be in high school now. It's, it serves as a foundation, but it's now it's time for you to, ri to rise up. It's time for you to rise up. And Tracy, we can talk, we can talk more about this offline, of course, but um, that's all I'll say for now. That's the, that's the big message coming to you now. You know, when, when we are so concerned with what other folks think, they have control of our lives. Our lives are not ours. They're someone else's. They're someone else's. And what a way to live. What a way to live. That's not really living. And the people that want us to be how they want us to be, not how we want us to be, but the people that want us to be how they want us to be, they have good intentions. They have great intentions. Fantastic. And they'll have so many reasons as to why we should be the way they want us to be. Because they believe that God wants people to be a certain way. That whole religious trope will be thrown at you in, 50, in a tenth of a second. That's automatic. Boom. Here's the catch with that. Do not allow someone else to define God for you. I'm going to say that again. Do not allow someone else to define God for you. Don't let them do it. You define God for yourself as you have the spark of God within you. Do not allow someone to talk to you as if you don't know God. Now perhaps if you need to read or you need to make a decision on your faith or you need to do meditate or whatever more, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But that's different than allowing someone else to completely define God for you. You've got to do that on your own, and you deserve to do that on your own, on your own terms. And that's where a lot of us fall short. Again, why am I saying it? Because I did it. I allowed someone to define God for me. I grew up in a Baptist church, baptized when I was 10. That's what I did. I, and I am not throwing away that foundation, that foundation was fantastic. It's part of what makes me me today. But I got to a point where I knew it was time to move on. And I'm so glad I did. And my life is completely different. And I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I did. And as far as I'm concerned, I did that. And in doing that, I allowed God to work with and through me, for me. So no one can tell me that what I'm doing is not God-centered, it's this, 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 and this, that. No one can say that to me. No one can say that to me. Because I know who God is for me. I know how God has worked in my life, and there's no question. There is no question. All right. All right, Riss Ellis, uh, Riss Ellis, great analogy. Thank you, Jules. Thank you, Vicky Washington. Programming, absolutely. Programming, absolutely. We all have been programmed. Every last one of us has been programmed. And ironically, it's amazing how many of us, myself included, have to, as we get older and we come to different realizations 
have to deprogram ourselves to allow ourselves to be free as adults. You know, I think there's a false belief that when you become an, an adult, you just automatically know you're good. Great, I was a child, I didn't know then, now I know, I, now I know for sure because I'm an adult. No, you know what you were told as a child. That's all. And now perhaps you just have more conviction, but you know what you were told as a child, which was, which were principles passed down by someone else who was an adult. Conversely, I think what's more important is people being taught how to honor their true authentic self and the God within, and then to see God in others. And to see the truth of God in others. But we're not, we're not raised to do that. We're raised to fall in line. We're raised to obey. We're raised to fear God because we don't want to go to hell. So we're raised to, to, you know, to, to be fearful of going to hell. And we're raised to be a part of a pack in groups and to conform. And while I do believe that there is a benefit to that, there's a benefit to uh, some form of conformity uh, and standards, uh, we do it in the wrong ways for the wrong reasons. And we snuff out a lot of people's light as a result of that because of fear. So, I am probably going to end it on that unless someone else, Queen Afua, hello there. Yes, moment to moment, work on self. Yes, thank you, Riss, absolutely. And I think we can probably, you can probably end it there. It's rolling up on 10 o'clock. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining up. Uh, let me see here what the next, I forget what the next love language is going to be actually no I know that yeah acts of service acts of service which I think was Tracy's acts of service is the next love language and it was another woman in here as well who had acts of service so we're doing that next week so you all I definitely appreciate everyone attending thank you so much for your comments I really appreciate it uh, we're going to start again at 9 o'clock, 9, yeah, 9 o'clock p.m. sharp, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, please feel free to invite people to watch this. Uh, actually, let me make a couple of announcements before I sign off. Got, got a few things coming up. Got four things coming up this year. Um, three of those things is in the, are in the month of July. So July 15th which is Saturday from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. I'll be at Naturalopathy in Ellenwood with the Ladies of Naturalopathy providing de-stressing and uh, heart expanding techniques for you to relax and embrace yourself and emotionally heal. So that is uh, July 15th. I'll be doing a Synergetic BDSM workshop in Atlanta on July 28th, that is a Friday evening from 8 p.m. To, to 10 p.m. That is a $50 fee. That's going to be a lot of fun. Now, there are only 16 spots available for that. So sign up fast. And I, I think it's still, I think there are still some spots left. And you can find these events on my homepage, on my Kazimbe Abena Facebook page. Also, I'll be doing a Cultivating Intimacy event in East Point on Cleveland Avenue. Uh, on 729, which is a Saturday, uh, the next day after the Synergetic BDSM event, I have a Cultivating Intimacy event, which is 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. That is for uh, couples and singles, just like the Synergetic BDSM event is for couples and singles as well. That is, all, that is $49. Um, and I'll be talking about a lot of the things that, we, that I speak of uh, in my cult in this cultivating intimacy broadcast, but we'll be doing exercises. We'll be doing exercises that will teach you how to connect, how to communicate, how to receive love, how to give love, and uh, how to also give love and receive love in, in, to yourself. So it'll be a, it'll be a really really fun and impactful time. I'm looking forward to that. And the fourth thing is 
the Art of Sacred Sexuality Retreat in Destin, Florida. Uh, that is going to be October 11th through the 16th of this year. Uh, we uh, This is uh, the third time I'll be presenting at this Art of Sacred Sexuality event by Brian and Karen Craig. It's a fantastic event. Um, it's going to be again in Destin, Florida, which is beautiful. I think they have uh, rent out a private uh, hotel resort for this, so it's going to be fantastic. Uh, I'll be presenting again on Synergetic BDSM, and there will be there are going to be a host of other practitioners there putting on workshops. That is a five that is a seven day event. Uh, again, that is October 11th through the 16th, and that will be phenomenal. Trust me. They Brian and Karen Craig, they create a very safe, a very safe uh, and uh, sophisticated and spiritual and sensual environment for people to explore uh, and for people to uh, gather some tools. So I really want to encourage you to check these things out. All these things are on my pages, on my page here, so be sure to check them out. Other than that, I'll see you again next week. Tuesday, 9 p.m. sharp. Please spread the word. This will be again for uh, Cultivating Intimacy. And we'll be going over acts of service next week. So again, my name is Kazim Bayabain. I know as the Heart Whisperer, Intimacy Coach, and Certified Holistic Practitioner. Peace and love to you. Everyone have a great week. And love somebody this week. Tell somebody you love them this week. All right. Peace and love to you. Bye-bye.